Welcome to my tutorial series on modules. Today I will cover datetime module. The datetime module defines two constants, mean year and max year, and six different classes for manipulating dates and time in both simple and complex ways. The constant mean year returns the smallest year allowed in a date or datetime object, and it has an integer value of 1. Whereas the constant max year returns the largest year allowed in a date or datetime object and it has an integer value of 9999. The six different classes provided by datetime module are date, datetime, time, time delta, tz info, and time zone. In datetime module, there are two different kinds of date and time objects, naive and aware. The aware objects contain time zone and daylight saving time information, whereas a naive object has no such information. Objects of class date are always naive objects. Whereas the objects of class time and date time classes may be naive or aware. Whereas the distinction between naive and aware objects doesn't apply to time delta objects. The tz info is an abstract base class, meaning that this class shouldn't be instantiated directly. A class that implements tz info class is time zone class. The time zone class can represent simple time zones with fixed offset from UTC. So if you want to create an aware datetime or time object, then the optional tz info attribute of these classes must be set to an instance of the subclass of tz info class, and that can be time zone class. But the Python community provides some external modules, like PyTZ module, which offers the simplest way to create an aware time or a datetime object. The PyTZ module provides Olsen time zone database, which is the full database of every time zone definition you might need and it is even recommended in Python documentation over time zone class. So in this tutorial, I will cover a short example how to create an aware object using both time zone class and using PyTZ module. It is important to mention that all date, date time, time and time delta objects are immutable. This means that they can be used as dictionary keys, placed in sets and used in a variety of other operations. Now let's start first with the date class. An object of date class represents a simple date consisting of year, month and day. To create an object of date class, you can call the init method, which takes three arguments, a valid year, a valid month, where month January has integer value 1 and month December has integer value of 12, and a valid day in the given month and year. If any of three arguments is not valid, Python raises value error exception. Date class also defines magic method string. So you can also pass the object of date class as an argument in the print function. The date class also provides three instance attributes to get year, month, and day. Besides that, date class also provides three class attributes min, which gives the earliest representable date, max, which gives the latest representable date, and class attribute resolution, which gives the smallest possible difference between two non equal dates objects as shown in this example. The date class also provides three class methods, which allow us to create a date object in three other different ways. The class method today creates a date object, which represents current local date. The class method from timestamp creates a date object corresponding to the timestamp. In this example, I have passed the time function of time module as an argument, which returns second since the epoch as a floating point number. Similarly, I can also pass any integer or floating point number where the integer value 0 returns 1st January 1970, which is also known as epoch. Similarly, the class method from ordinal returns a date object corresponding to proleptic Gregorian ordinal. So the integer value 1 corresponds to the first day of year 1. Now let's look at the methods provided by date class. The replace method takes three arguments, year, month, and day, and it returns a new date object replaced by given arguments. In this example, I have created object 2 from date object 1, where year attribute is now set to 1999. The time tuple method returns a time tuple corresponding to date object where hours, minutes, and seconds are set to 0. The two ordinal method returns the proleptic Gregorian ordinal corresponding to the date object. 
The weekday method returns the day of the week where 0 donates Monday and 6 donates Sunday. The ISO weekday is very similar to the weekday method, but the weekday Monday has integer value 1 and weekday Sunday has integer value 7. Similarly, the ISO calendar method returns the date as a tuple, where week is in the range 1 to 53 and weekday is in the range 1 to 7. The ISO format method returns a string representing date in ISO 8601 format. The C time method returns a string representing the date in 24 character format. The string format method returns a string representing date as specified by string format arguments. For a complete list of formatting directives, please go to the official Python documentation. Now before we start with time and daytime classes, let's first look at the time delta class. Time delta objects represent the difference between two dates or times. Time delta objects can be created by computing the difference between two date instances, as shown in this example. You can also create time delta objects manually using the following constructor. The time delta class constructor takes seven arguments and all are optional. If the arguments are given, they can be integers, floats, and even negative values are allowed. The only significant parameters are days, seconds, and microseconds, which are used internally to represent a difference between two date or time objects. If other parameters are also supplied, they are converted into days, seconds, and microseconds parameters. The time delta class also provides three instance variables, days, seconds, and microseconds, as shown in this example. In addition to instance variables, time delta class also provides class attributes, min, max, and resolution, which describe the maximum range and resolution of time delta instances. The time delta class provides only one instance method, total seconds, which return the total number of seconds contained in a duration. The daytime module also supports different mathematical operations involving date, daytime, and time delta objects. Here you can see the table of supported operations by a time delta object. For further details, please go to the official Python documentation. Now let's look at the next class time. The instance of class time represents time. And as I have mentioned before, a time object can be naive or aware. The constructor of time class takes five optional arguments, hour, minute, seconds, microseconds, and tz info. In this example, I have created a naive instance of time class because the tz info attribute is set to known. So to create an aware time object, you have to set tz info attribute to an instance of subclass of tz info class, which can be time zone class. The time object also provides the magic method string. So I can print the time object using the print function. Time class also provides three class attributes, min, max, and resolution, which return earliest representable time, latest representable time, and smallest possible difference between two non-equal time objects. Time class also provides five instance attributes, hour, minute, second, microsecond, and tz info. The replace method returns a new time object where one or more components have been replaced by the split value. The ISO format method returns a string representing the time in ISO 8601 format. The string format method returns a string representing time as specified by string format arguments. For a complete list of formatting directives, please go to the official Python documentation. The time class also provides three other methods. UTC offset, DST daylight saving time, and TZ name. For naive objects, all these methods return known. To create an aware time object, you have to set the TZ info attribute of time class to an instance of TZ info subclass. As I've mentioned before, the TZ info is an abstract based class and it cannot be instantiated directly. So let's create our own class which inherits the TZ info class and implements the required methods of tz info class. In this example, I have created the gmt1 class, which inherits tz info class and implements UTC offset, DST, and time zone name methods of tz info class. According to tz info class, 
UTC offset and daylight saving time methods must return time delta objects, whereas TZ name method must return a string object, which is the name of time zone. So you can create your own subclass of TZ info class according to your requirements. But you do have to follow the protocol given in the TZ info class. Now I have created an aware object of time class in which TZ info attribute is set to the instance of GMT1 class. In next line, I'm calling the instance methods UTC offset, DST, and time zone name. As I've mentioned before, the daytime module also provides time zone class, which is a subclass of TZ info class, and it can represent time zones with fixed offset from UTC. The offset must be a time delta object, otherwise, value error exception will be raised. In this example, the TZ info attribute of time class is set to time zone instance. In next line, I print the time object too. Later, I call the instance methods UTC offset, DST, and TZ name. The DST method of time zone class always return known. Now let's look at daytime class. A daytime object is used to represent both date and time together. There are many possible ways to create a daytime instance. The daytime constructor takes eight arguments where the argument year, month, and day are compulsory. In this example, I have created a naive object of daytime class because by default, tz info attribute is set to none. Daytime class also provides different class methods, which allow us to create daytime objects in different ways. The class method today creates a naive daytime object representing current local date and time. The class method now is just like today method but it has time zone as parameter. If tz is not known, it must be an instance of subclass of tz info class, and the current date and times are converted to the given time zone. In this example, I call class method now without giving tz argument. In next example, I have set the tz attribute to time zone instance, and the current date and time are converted to the given time zone. The UTC method is just like class method now, but it creates a naive datetime object with current UTC date and time. The class method from timestamp creates a datetime object corresponding to the POSIX timestamp. If the optional argument tz is known or not specified, the timestamp is converted to the platform's local date and time, and the return datetime object is a naive object, as shown in this example. In next example, I have set the tz attribute to an instance of time zone class. And if you look at the output, timestamp is converted according to tz time zone, and return object is an aware object. Whereas the class method utc from timestamp creates a utc datetime object, corresponding to the POSIX timestamp with tz info set to known. The class method from ordinal creates a datetime object corresponding to proleptic Gregorian ordinal, where 1st January of year 1 has ordinal value of 1. The class method combined creates a datetime object by combining the contents of date object date and time object time. The class method string pass time creates datetime object by passing the date string according to the given format. The daytime class also provides class and instance attributes, as shown in these examples. Now let's look at the methods provided by daytime class. The date method returns a date object with same date, whereas time method returns a time object with same hour, minute, second, and microsecond, but tz info attribute is set to none. The time tz method is just like the time method above but tz info attribute is not set to none. The replace method returns a new datetime object with one or more of listed parameters replaced by new values. The next method as time zone takes a time zone as an argument and converts a datetime object in the given time zone. Let's see an example using pytz module. In this example, I have imported the external module pytz. Now let's first create an aware datetime object using pytz module. 
In my date time constructor, I have set the tz info attribute to the UTC variable of pi tz module. This will return an aware date time object with time zone attribute set to UTC. If you look at the output, you can see the UTC offset is set to 0. Similarly, I can also create an aware date time object using class method now. Now to convert UTC date and time to any other time zone, I can call the AS time zone method which takes a time zone as an argument and returns a new date time object in the given time zone. If you don't know the name of time zone in which you want to convert your date time object, you can print all available time zones from PyTZ module as shown here. But if the date time object is a naive object, you can either use the replace or localize method of PyTZ module to convert it into aware date time object as shown in these two different examples. For better understanding, please try these examples with your own date time objects. Now let's look at other methods available in date time class. The UTC offset method returns known if the date time object is a naive object, else it returns the UTC offset. Similarly, if the date time object is a naive object, DST method returns known, else it returns the daylight saving time if available. The tz name method returns the time zone name for aware objects if available, else it returns known. The UTC time tuple method returns a time tuple containing date and time information normalized to UTC date and time. The two ordinal method returns the proleptic Gregorian ordinal corresponding to the date time object. The timestamp method returns POSIX timestamp, that is the number of seconds since Unix epoch. The weekday method returns the current weekday as an integer value, where Monday has integer value of 0 and Sunday has integer value of 6. Whereas ISO weekday is just like weekday method, but Monday has integer value of 1 and Sunday has integer value of 7. The ISO calendar method returns triple consists of year, week number and weekday according to ISO standard. The ISO format method returns a string representing the date and time in ISO 8601 format. The CTIME method converts a date time object into 24 character string as shown in this example. The string format method returns a string representing date and time specified by string format arguments. For the complete list of formatting directives, please go to the official Python documentation. I hope now you have basic understanding of date time module. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.